Hey everybody, welcome back to Backroads Living YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a devil's food cake and I'm going to use a boxed cake mix, but I'm going to spruce it up a little bit uh, to make it taste more like a deli cake. I've been doing a little bit of research online to find out how to make this uh, better than I have been already doing it. Um, I had already been substituting butter and things like that with oil and seeing how it tasted and I'd, I'd uh, got the cake to where I liked it pretty good, but it just wasn't what I wanted. So uh, today we're gonna follow uh, some instructions of two or three different people that I have uh, been following along. Uh, and one of the things that they recommended to do is to uh, blend the wet ingredients first, which will be our butter, which we'll be melting, our milk, which we'll be incorporating instead of water. Uh, we'll be using four eggs, large eggs, instead of three. Uh, if you have uh, fresh eggs from, you know, if you raise hens or somebody around you raises hens, uh, if they're small eggs, you can add five if you want to. And then, of course, our oil. We're going to use the correct amount of oil that it that it does call for. But uh, the oil leaves it light and fluffier than if you substitute all butter for oil. And then the butter we add to it is going to give it a better taste. We're also going to add some chocolate instant pudding uh, mix in with the dry. Uh, and this will give it a little bit better texture. Um, then we're going to mix it to the time that the box suggests. We don't want to over mix it or under mix it. And when we put it in the oven, we're going to set the timer to what it recommends on the nine inch cake pans, but we're going to check it ahead of that to make sure that we don't over bake it. We want it to be a really good cake. So that's what we're going to do uh, today. We're going to uh, add the oil and the butter uh, and the milk and the eggs together first to get them all mixed up and then we're going to add our cake mix and our chocolate pudding mixed together okay so we'll be right back we have our melted butter now the order i'm going to do this in is i'm going to add the oil first to the butter uh, simply because the butter is still warm kind of a little above warm actually and i don't want to put the eggs in there and change the eggs having scrambled eggs so we're going to put our Oil first, that'll help uh, cool the butter down a little bit. And I think that'll do plenty for what we're needing. I'm gonna go ahead and put the milk too and I'll just use my measuring cup to put my egg shells in. Get this mixed up really well. Egg, butter, milk, and oil. And now this is going to make some thicker cakes. It's going to add a little more mix to your pans. If you wanted to make three cakes out of this, no doubt you could. But this really gets your ingredients incorporated real well before you put your dry mix to it. So, that should be good. Lay that right over there. And then, we'll go ahead and get our dry mix ready. Good, 
most times I would already have this ready. I just didn't this time. in the center there like so and then we'll pour the wet mix in there and mix it according to the box directions and we'll be right back now that we've got our cake mixed and we mixed it for two minutes that's what the box called for and as you can see this this is made quite a bit more than a standard box cake will make and the texture I want you to see this texture before we start putting it in the pans that texture is just that's going to be good. Now, I've not made one like this before, but uh, we're getting ready to find out just how good it is. I'm going to get this put in the pans and get it put in the, uh, the oven at 350. And like I said, we're going to check it. Uh, the box right here, it says to, uh, to bake. Uh, add three to five minutes, time for dark or coated pans. Cake is done when toothpick inserted in center comes out clean. Now we're going to follow the box directions. So we've got two nine inch pans. It says 24 to 29 minutes. I'm going to guess about 20 to 25 minutes on these. I'm just guessing. We cook with gas oven. I don't know if that makes a big difference or not, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the, uh, the batter in the, in the pans and uh, we have pre, we've already sprayed our pan with a cooking spray, a good uh, coating of that and we'll show you what that looks like when we get ready to put them in the oven. This is the batter in the pans. It's quite a bit thicker than your standard cake batter. So I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping it turns out really good. Uh, the smell, and, and I did uh, just taste the batter just a little bit. I really liked it. Um, hoping this turns out uh, with a real good texture and, and a real good taste. But uh, before I put my cakes in the oven, I always take them and, and I shake them back and forth like this to try to level them to, so we don't have so much batter build up in the center. You want your batter to go out to the sides as much as possible to keep the, the center from raising. But anyway, some people take their pans, uh, I read that they take the pan and they spin it real fast on the counter. Now I'm not going to try that because I don't want mine out on the floor. <laughs> I don't think I could do that with these pans. These pans, by the way, are Rachel Ray. I've had these pans for probably two years. And these have been some of the best pans that I have ever used. They're not the most expensive pans, but they have been some of the best pans. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with them. So I'll leave a link to those if I can find them uh, in the comment section below. So let's get these in the oven and we'll set the timer and uh, be back shortly to let you know how they've turned out. These are cakes right out of the oven. Now, as you can see, they're starting to deflate a little bit, which is fine with me. Uh, sometimes I actually take like a clean towel and I press down on them just a little. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. You don't want to push real hard, but that helps flatten them out just a little bit. I left these in the oven for 28 minutes. Now, if I had it to do over, I would have took them out at 25. Um, the reason being, these edges right here, I hope you can see this, they're getting a little bit overdone, maybe not overdone, but they're gonna be more done than the center. Um, if I'd have taken these out at 25 minutes, the cakes would have continued to bake just a little bit in that pan because of the heat build up, and they would have no doubt been just fine at 25 minutes. So make a note of that, uh, and I need to make a note of that, that the next time 
then I bake these cakes. I need to take them out of the oven at about 25 minutes instead of 28. Uh, these will be fine and they'll taste really good. I'm sure the, the batter in this and the, uh, the taste of the batter when I got through mixing it was just excellent. So uh, we'll be back in a little bit with a frosted cake after these cool a while. Now we're not professional cooks here and don't claim to be. We cook because we enjoy it. Uh, we like to try new recipes and we just like eating the stuff we cook. We don't cook it or bake it. Uh, for anybody else, it, it's all usually consumed right here at home. Um, we just share the things that we find new, the ideals that we uh, have and things we've made in the past. And we're gonna to continue to share more as we uh, go along. So if you like our videos, please don't forget to like the, uh, the video uh, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we post new videos uh, and share the uh, video with your friends on your social media. We'd, we'd really appreciate that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get this icing put on here. And this just, you can see how good that spread. And the icing has a different color to it also with that vanilla extract in it. It changes the color of the icing just a little bit and the taste of oh, the taste is so much better. Now I know most people have a lazy Susan to do this with, but this is my lazy Susan. <laughs> We're very simple here. Uh, we live simple lives and uh, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for all of our provisions. And we just, uh, we just simple folks who enjoy living out in the country. Trust in the Lord in all his ways. You know, we're living in hard times financially for, uh, for a lot of people. A lot of people have been laid off, lost jobs. Uh, many things are going on around our world. But if you've learned to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've learned really what it means to rest in him then you can survive through this time without a lot of stress and anxiety because there's a lot of suicides going on right now there's a lot of stress going along uh, a lot of anxious people in our world so that's just a little tidbit of information there that might help you folks out uh, if you are having some kind of stress or anxiety in your life look to the lord and seek him and he will help you so now these cakes as they turned out the tops of them kind of flattened out the air kind of came out of them so that made it that made it easier for me to stack them and ice them and we're going to go ahead and finish icing this cake and then we'll be back with the finished product for you this is the finished product um this icing was just i don't know what to say about it it was fabulous uh, after i mixed it for about a minute on medium high speed with the almond extract in it. It is delicious. Um, and the icing went on so easy. I had no problem putting this icing on. If you've ever used much of the uh, chocolate frosting from the tubs right out of the store, even at room temperature, if you mix them a little bit with a spoon or a knife or something, they still have a tendency to pull at your cake sometimes. But now this, this one on smooth as silk. Another thing that helps, uh, I let this cool in the pan for 10 minutes on the wire rack. Then I turned it out of the pan and set it on the wire rack out of the pan for another 10 minutes. So this cake cooled for 20 minutes. Um, I also read, this is just a tip uh, that I read. If you want a really slick, smooth cake, now you can see mine here has these waves in it a little bit where I rub my spatula over it. But uh, a professional baker that I read after while I was doing some research on this cake said that if you want to do a really sl smooth, slick icing on your cake, regardless of the icing you're using, that you'll want to take uh, your spatula and run a bowl of hot water. Uh, put your spatula down in the hot water, allow it to get warm, and then dry it off and run it over your icing. Uh, they said you may have to do that eight or ten times. Repeat the process. Warm it, uh, dry it, go over the icing, 
warm it, dry it, go over the icing, but the warm spatula will literally make the icing just smooth as silk without any wave or anything in it. So that's what the professional cake maker said. And I believe that. Uh, the warm spatula would certainly do that. But anyway, thank you all for uh, stopping by Back Roads Living again. And as uh, always, we appreciate you and we pray the Lord's blessings upon you. Uh, if you've enjoyed our video, please like and share uh, again. Um, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon uh, to be notified when we upload new videos. This really helps us a lot. So God bless you all and have a great day.